Hey everybody, and welcome to another Enhanced Edition, where I have once again done some custom painting on a figure, and this time it is the Bumblebee Cyberverse Adventures Deluxe Bumblebee. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what these things are called. I'm so not versed in Cyberverse. These are the new figures, the ones that are just coming out now, the deluxe versions that come with the uh, Macadam Build-A-Figure parts. They're really cool figures in their own right. I actually like the Cyberverse designs because they're kind of G1, but not quite, and they're just doing something a little bit different, and I like a little bit different. The deluxe figures are a bit less not good than a lot of the other Cyberverse figures have been. I will stand by Cyberverse Cheetor and some of the other Spark Armor figures without hesitation. Also, Ultimate Class Grimlock. I need to do a video on him at some point. But there have been a lot of figures in that line that have just been not great. These are great. It's like a combination of the slightly more simplistic stylings of Cyberverse, but with the engineering and effects parts of Siege. You've got figures that actually can pose and have ankle tilts and have some pretty interesting and cool transformations. So uh, yeah, it's, uh, with the exception of Shockwave, it's been a great wave so far. I got mine um, after watching Vault Matrix's videos on each of these things, which you can check out there. He mentioned that he got his off of Google Shopping, which is a little bit weird, but I followed suit and ordered the entire wave off of Google Shopping. But yeah, I got the whole wave, which was Bumblebee, Shockwave, Megatron, and Optimus. And aside from Shockwave, I really like them. And I mean, Shockwave as a robot was actually really cool. It's just his alt mode is not. But anyway, we are here to talk about Bumblebee. And the reason we're talking about Bumblebee is because I painted the crap out of this thing. I looked up a bunch of reference photos, and I will say when we get to the back of the car mode, uh, I could not find any reference photos on the back of Bumblebee's car mode, so I just kind of guessed. Kept it relatively simple because it is the back of the car mode, but I did want to break it up a little bit. But looked up reference photos and tried to emulate everything as best I could. There are certain things like his robot mode in the show is not exactly the same as the robot mode that the toy presents. It's pretty darn close, but there are certain aspects to it that aren't quite right. So I may do with what I got. But anyway, here we have Deluxe Cyberverse Adventures Bumblebee in his car mode. And I actually really like this car mode. It's almost like a combination muscle and sports car because it's got kind of like the blunter, more boxy front end. It's an interesting combination. It's got almost like a Cybertronian feel to it, too, but also kind of a real world feel for a quick comparison. I'm going to pop up a photo that I took of this guy before I started working on him. So you can kind of get an idea of just how much detail was added, but I will break it down in a bit. And yeah, I, I really, really like how this looks now because <laughs> there is a lot to do here. Like just in the front, the uh, red here, the entire grill section here for the black, the silver in the middle there. I actually did the black along the top of the bumper, like right along the top there this little decal whatever thing in the front there paint that these bits on the inside of the engine are supposed to be light blue but that is too small i'm not gonna bother <laughs> and they painted it silver already so it's fine uh, i continued the black lines they normally go up along here and then stop so i continued them up to the windshield i did a little bit of black around the edge of the windshield to try and bring that out um, i needed to do a little bit more along there but i just didn't want to risk it getting all super uneven the black outline and the blue for the venting on the sides there. The black line here normally just goes across the door, so I actually continued it from this wheel well all the way across to here. One of the things that helped with this was uh, Diana got me some masking tape, like a narrow, like you know, maybe like that wide uh, tape made for like masking off parts for painting. So I just laid down the tape and then went in and painted it and didn't have to worry as much about keeping it straight. It could be a little bit better, but I think for what it is, it turned out okay. The wheels were really the hardest part because, it's, you know, it's light blue in these wheels and it's kind of difficult to keep things from getting all sloppy. And I tried to clean it up, but then you've got, you know, some visible imperfections right in there and some stuff on the inside there. I'd been working on this thing for so long. I was just kind of like, ah, forget it. It's fine. I kind of cut myself off after a point. I also did the, let's call it eyeliner, around the edges of the windows, and even that little bit of black right by the side mirror there. And I did that because according to the renders, I think it's supposed to be shadow, but I just like how that looks. 
And I think ultimately, yes, this definitely is an improvement over the original version. And then in the back, you can see I just did the uh, red and blue for the tail lights, and then this little black strip across the back. I have no idea how accurate any of this is. I was just guessing, but I kind of wanted to break this up a little bit because without this, it's just stark yellow with these gray bits there. So I think it turned out all right. And again, it's the back of the car, so who really cares? I was kind of thinking of going in and panel lining some of this stuff, but then I decided not to because this is meant to be like a cartoon render type thing. And I feel like if I started adding panel lining details, then it would just start to be a little bit too meticulous with the visuals. And considering the more simplistic cell shaded CG models that the show uses, I just thought that'd be a bit too much. I think this works pretty darn well. Just pop up that before picture again so you can see. It just adds a lot more color, more than anything, I think. My favorite thing about this is how the black line detail is just more complete. Also, this took a while, so I think I'm just proud of myself for that. <laughs> anyway, let's take a look at the robot mode. All right, and here we have Deluxe Cyberverse Adventures Bumblebee in robot mode, and this looks also great to me. Uh, again, used a lot of reference photos to get what I could. Uh, there are certain things that are just wrong. Like the shoulders here are actually supposed to stop right about here, and these bits tuck away somewhere else, but the toy isn't built that way, so it's just kind of, that's how it is. But it's a cool figure, even without the detailing, but I do really like what the detailing adds to it. I'll just pull up the before picture real quick so you can see what this guy originally looked like, and that is not my photo because I unfortunately forgot to take a photo of this guy before I started working on him. But you can see that there's quite a difference in terms of the coloration. There's a lot that isn't painted on this figure, but it's, you know, they have to release a mass market toy. I'm not holding it against Hasbro for that. It's just that I think this looks really good and I'm very proud of how this turned out. There is so much on the legs that is not painted. It's basically just the silver down here and the red up here. So like the uh, black on the feet, the blue and red dots, that's all me. These black lines here. Me, also done using the masking stuff. Uh, the black detailing around the vents here and the vents themselves. All the stuff around the waist here. It's not perfect, but I did it entirely freehand, so cut me some slack. <laughs> I also went in, and uh, I'm not sure how accurate it is, but I painted this bit of his midsection silver. And it's a little streaky. I kind of feel like maybe I should have done a second coat, but at the same time, it's, it's fine because it's metal, so I think if it's streaky, it's okay. But... This is based off of the reference photos that I had. This could be wrong, I don't know, but I kind of like how it looks. It adds just a little bit of punch right in the middle there. I also did the hands, the backs of the hands, sort of like he's wearing fingerless gloves, and I like that look. I only had one shade of yellow, so I wasn't gonna try and color match this, but I think at a glance, it works totally fine. Realistically, I probably should have found other things to paint yellow on this guy, but I didn't really see anything that was missing yellow other than the backs of the hands, so oh well. These are kind of the one thing that I'm a little bit wary of during transformation because the legs kind of clamp up and around everything and there's potential for scraping here. So I just kind of been careful transforming back and forth, but all the other paint seems to be holding up just fine. And you can see the line there from uh, the, you know, continuing the line from the door, some of the other car detailing up front there. And then we get to the head, which is, uh, out of the box, it's, you know, the silver, blue, and yellow, but then I added the black for the uh, eyebrows and the stripes that go up and around. and could be a little cleaner, but again, I freehanded this the best I could. Also did the black around the uh, head crest thing, and uh, I wasn't about to go in and freehand that, so I went in with the panel lining stuff to do the lines inside the head crest, and then just went in with a paintbrush and kind of lightly brushed away the excess once it had dried. Probably could be cleaner, but at the same time, there's it's just so tiny. I didn't really see myself coming up with any better way to do that. And there are other details on this guy that I know I could have painted. Like, I kind of wanted to do some silver up in here, because, like, looking at the reference photos, he has kind of a silverish looking streak, kind of like this, going down the center of his neck, but he doesn't really have much of a visible neck, but still could have tried to homage it down there. The thighs has very tight thigh swivels, <laughs> but there are lines on the thighs here that are supposed to be light blue because it's some of that like energon whatever coursing through his body. But uh, it got to a point where I kind of thought that it'd be 
a little bit overkill to do all of these little details because, you know, he's based on a cartoon. He doesn't need to be super duper detailed. Another thing I'm not sure of, um, I've seen him displayed like this with his shoulders up, and that's not a bad look. I like having the shoulders, like the car bits, up here, but the problem is then it puts his elbows at chest level, and that's kind of silly. So I feel like this is actually where they're supposed to sit, a little bit lower down. But then I also don't know what the deal is with uh, these shoulder bits. Like, I don't know if they're supposed to be more up like this or angled slightly. I feel like either one works, but personally, I prefer having them angled a bit because I think it just adds a little bit more dynamicism to his silhouette. And of course, you got the door wings on the back. And one other thing I was thinking of painting, but decided not to because of the transformation is I was thinking of painting the insides, uh, the lower inside portions of the door wings gray because looking at the reference photos, that's kind of what it would need to be. But I was like, no, because this needs to go down and clamp around everything and just having that added paint there, I'd be so worried of things scratching off or affecting the, uh, the color of the uh, internal bits and stuff. It's just like, no, don't want to risk it. So that is what we are left with. And again, as a quick reminder, here is the before photo, which again, not my photo, but uh, it's my fault. I definitely could have done some things a little bit differently. I probably could have done things a little bit cleaner in a few places, but I really, really like how this came out. And I'm really looking forward to eventually painting up Megatron and Optimus, but uh, they're going to have to wait because I'm a little bit burned out on, uh, <laughs> on the up close detail painting and like massive uh, detailing of figures right now because I've kind of done a few back to back in short succession. So I'm going to take a bit of a breather, but it was worth it. So that is it for my look at Cyberverse Adventures Deluxe Class Bumblebee. What do you all think of this figure and what do you all think of the deco? Yes, I know that it, the original release could absolutely use more paint, but again, we need to be realistic here. This is a company doing a mass release of multiple figures across multiple lines and multiple IPs because they don't just own Transformers. They, they have a lot of different licenses that they're dealing with here. So yes, it would have been nice if there was more paint on the figure originally, but reality is a thing that we have to deal with. I feel like this turned out pretty darn well, if I do say so myself, which makes me feel like I am tooting my own horn a bit too much, but eh, I can't help it. I feel like I'm getting a little bit better at this. Are there any details that you feel like I should have left off or anything that you think I should have added? In terms of Bumblebee interpretations, what do you think of the Cyberverse Adventures version of Bumblebee? Because I think this looks pretty cool. And if you are into Cyberverse at all, what's the next Cyberverse Adventures figure that you are looking forward to getting yourself? Whether it's Bumblebee, Optimus, Megatron, Shockwave, RC, Thunderhowl, the other ones that I can't quite remember off the top of my head. I'm curious. Anyway, that is going to do it. Thank you everybody for watching, and please stay fabulous.